Let's take a look at basic transforms. Transforms are the three tools you need to move, rotate, or scale objects in a scene. You can access them from the main toolbar, but also from the quad menu, which appears when you right-click in a viewport. The keyboard shortcuts for move, rotate, and scale are W for move, E for rotate, and R for scale. These transforms are also selection tools, so you don't have to switch back and forth between select object and these three transform tools. When a transform like move is enabled and you select an object and a transform gizmo appears. In the case of move, the gizmo displays three axes handles representing X, Y, and Z directions, each colored red, green, and blue, respectively. To move an object in any one direction, place the cursor on the arrow until the line of its axis handle turns yellow, though the arrowhead itself doesn't change color. When you click and drag, the object's motion is constrained to that direction. To move an object in two directions simultaneously, place the cursor on the square where two direction axes meet. Rotation is similar, but the gizmo is different, with a set of circles. Again, the red, green, and blue colors reflect X, Y, and Z direction, respectively. There is also a gray circle which lets you rotate the object on a plane that is parallel to the viewport. Drag one of these circles, it turns yellow, and the rotation is constrained to that axis. When the cursor is inside the sphere of rings, you can rotate the object freely on all three axes. If you wish, you can turn on Angle Snap from the main toolbar to restrict the rotation to 5 degree increments. Right-click Angle Snap to access the Options tab and change the degree of snapping you want, such as 45 degrees. You can also use the Options in the Snap tab for precise control to specify which elements you want to snap to, such as grid lines, points, object pivots, edges, faces, and so on. The keyboard shortcut to turn on angle snap is A. The scale gizmo has a few more options. In its simplest form, placing the cursor in the center of the gizmo lets you make the object bigger and smaller uniformly without deforming it. However, dragging a single access handle deforms the object just in one direction, which alters the object's aspect ratio. You can also scale an object in just two axes without scaling the third. For example, you can alter the station seat width and depth, which increases its radius without altering its height. Finally, click and hold on the scale icon and select this last scale option in the flyout to squash and stretch the object, which is very popular for creating a cartoon effect. Basically, this option lets you scale the object along a given axis, and it also deforms the object along the other axes to retain the object's volume. As we saw in the previous lesson, you can enter specific values to transform objects. You just type in the values at the bottom of the screen in the status bar using the absolute transform values. The selected object is now at coordinates 600 and 200 for X and Y, just as we type those in. Sometimes, though, you may need to offset a value as opposed to entering an absolute value for it. Suppose you want to push this object an extra 200 inches to the right from where it is currently. Then you would use the offset transform values by toggling the icon. Once you type in 200 in the X type in box and press enter, the object moves 200 inches to the right. The value in the box goes to zero, readying itself for another offset entry. Enter negative 200 now, and the object moves back 200 inches. Enter another negative 200, and it moves over even more. When you click back to the absolute transform type ends, Note that the object's absolute values are now 500, 100, and 213.5.
Ultimately, you may need to align objects together in some form or another. First, select the object you wish to relocate, such as the station seat. Click the Align tool, and then select the target object to which you want to align, such as the seat base. You can then preview and adjust the alignment using a series of options. Let's make sure in this case that we align the pivot points first, and then align the two objects in X and Y. Once you're done, click Apply to continue the alignment work, or press OK to confirm the changes and exit the dialog.